there's four gases that we really care about clinically in, in the alveolus. So there's oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and then water vapor. Okay, And in this diagram you can see we have the alveoli here, and then this red tube here represents the pulmonary capillary. And we'd have blood entering the pulmonary circulation from the right ventricle via the pulmonary artery, and then draining from the pulmonary capillary beds into the pulmonary veins, into the left atrium, through the left ventricle into the pulmonary into the um, systemic circulation as the arterial blood. Right. It's just orientated us to this diagram. Okay, and if we wanted to figure out what the partial pressure of oxygen is inside this inside the alveoli. Um, we need to do a number of things. Firstly, we need to understand what partial pressure is, and that's when you have a mixture of gases, as we do here. The total pressure of all the gases is going to be the sum of the pressures that each of the gases would exert individually. So if you think of this just from the gas molecules, these CO2 molecules are going to be flying around here, bouncing into things. And the same with the nitrogen molecules. These are just flying all over the place, banging into the walls of the alveoli. And as they do this, they exert pressure. That's what pressure is, right? It's the average force of those molecules hitting the walls um, is the pressure. So each of these gases exerts some, some proportion of the total pressure. And we want to know how much is exerted by oxygen. So how are we going to figure that out? Well, we need to know how what percentage of this gas mixture is oxygen molecules, right? We call that the the um, the fraction of oxygen, right? So when we breathe gas in from the atmosphere, we know that in atmospheric air, so atmosphere, atmospheric gas, we should say, we know that's going to be 21% oxygen, okay? But we also need to know, as we're talking about partial pressure, we also need to know what the total pressure is going to be, right? So, and then atmospheric pressure, well, that varies, right? We know that varies with altitude, so we can say variable. But at sea level, we know that the atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury, okay? So, the partial pressure of a dry gas then would just be 760 millimeters of mercury and the times by 21%, which is oxygen molecules, right? That would give you the, the oxygen's kind of share of the pressure that is exerted by the whole gas mixture, right? But so that would be straightforward to, to think about. But when we breathe gas in, it isn't dry, right? When, when we breathe gas in, it goes through our upper airway and it's warmed and it's humidified. Okay, so when that happens, when the mucosa of the, the nasal passages and the upper respiratory tract, when they warm and humidify gas, that water vapor exerts a pressure as well. Okay, and because that pressure can't be uh, water vapor and oxygen, that takes away from the total pressure that oxygen can be a part of, right? So we have to factor that in. So when gas comes down into the alveoli, it's been warmed and humidified. So we will factor in our, um, our water vapor pressure. So we're going to have the barometric pressure, and then we're going to minus the pressure of the water vapor, right? And then we're going to times that by whatever fraction oxygen is making up in that gas mixture. Now, normally that fraction would be 21% if you're just breathing atmospheric air. But again, that can vary as if we give people supplemental oxygen or make them breathe enriched oxygen concentrations, that, that percentage is gonna vary, right? So what we write instead is we write the fraction I for inspired oxygen, FiO2, right? So what fraction of the gas mixture is oxygen? And this value here is what we call the PiO2. Okay, so that's the partial pressure of the inspired oxygen. Okay, so the gas that you inspire into your lungs and that fills the alveoli, 
the partial pressure of oxygen in that gas mixture is this is this value here, the PiO2, and it's a it's a result of barometric pressure minus the pressure exerted by the the now humidified um, gas, so the uh, the water molecules that are um, in the gas state, and then we times that by whatever fraction the oxygen is making up of that gas, which, as we said, is normally 21%. So you could say, okay, now we're done. We've figured out the partial pressure in here, but we haven't because once once the gas gets into the alveoli, what's going to take place? Well, gas exchange is going to take place, right? So there's going to be an uptake of oxygen into the pulmonary capillaries, and there's going to be a release of CO2 into the alveoli. And once this CO2 uh, enters the alveoli, it's going to occupy space, and those molecules are going to bounce into the walls, and that's going to exert a pressure. So in this gas mixture that we're breathing in, the CO2 concentration is almost nothing. Whereas when we get it into the alveoli, and it starts diffusing out of the blood into the, into the alveolar space, that CO2 is going to start to exert a pressure. So we're going to need to factor that in when we're trying to figure out our, our oxygen partial pressure. Okay, And that's where the alveolar air equation comes in.